Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Rachel Colton of RNC, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a macrame plant hanger using a diamond pattern of diagonal clove hitch knots with square knots in the center. I'm also going to be showing you how to make a gathering knot at the top and at the bottom of your planter and I'll show you how to make this diamond pattern of square knots at the bottom for the net that will hold your pot. What you will need to make this plant hanger is you will need your string or rope. I'm going to be using three millimeter single strand cotton cord in this natural color from knotandropesupply.com. And you will also need some type of ring at the top. You can use a metal ring, either silver or brass, or you can use a wooden ring. These I purchased on Amazon. You'll also need a sharp pair of scissors. So to make this planter, what I've done is I've cut nine pieces of string. They are approximately 264 inches long, which is the same as about 670 centimeters. And I have cut nine pieces. We're going to make three arms or branches for this planter. And we're going to need three strings per arm. So what you want to do to get started is just take all of your strings and you're going to put them through the ring and then you're going to pull down until one set of loose ends matches up with the other set of loose ends so that you have them looped over your ring at the center point. So once all your loose ends are lined up about evenly, that means that you have the center of your strings looped over the ring. Now, if you want, you can spread these all out evenly or you can just let them rest as they are. Once you have your strings doubled over your ring, we are going to secure all of the strings together using what's called a gathering knot. For this knot, you are going to need another piece of string cut to about 24 inches, which is also about 61 centimeters. This is a good place to look in your scrap bin if you have some bigger pieces left over from other projects. What you want to do is take this smaller piece of string, line it up parallel with the rest of the strings, leave it sticking up over the top, maybe about an inch. Then you're going to come down about five inches, which is about 13 centimeters. And you're just going to fold this over to make a loop. Then with this other end, you're going to simply start wrapping around all of the strings. And you can do this as many times as you would like to make the knot longer or shorter. I would say you need at least five or six wraps times around, but if you want to make it longer, you can do more than that. And you want to wrap it fairly tightly, but not so tight that you can't pull the string through. I'm actually going to take one out. So I have it wrapped about one, two, three, four, five, six times. So now that you have this smaller end at the bottom of the wrapping, what you're going to do with that is you're going to put it through the loop at the bottom. Just pull it through, let it hang down, and then you're going to take the one at the top and you're going to pull it up. And as you pull it up, it's going to tug on that loop and the loop is going to tug on this string and it's going to pull all of that into the center. 
and you'll be able to see it. So when you see that it gets to the middle, then take both ends and just tug them in opposite directions to tighten up that knot. Now what you need to do is just trim the loose ends as close to that knot as you can without cutting your other parts of the string. And if you want, you can take your scissors and just tuck this fray gently up into that knot, or you could always just hide this in the back, whichever you prefer. You can just flip it over and then it'll be in the back. Okay, so now we're gonna start making our first branch. And since we started with nine strings, but doubled them over, we now have 18. So what we need is we need six per arm. So I'm gonna find six pieces that are fairly close together. So I'll just take six on this side and I'll take six that are sort of in the front and then six over here. And I'm gonna to try to make this as easy as I can for you to see. So I'll work with the six in the front for now. I happen to have a hook next to the one I'm working with. So I'm just going to drape these over that other hook to get them out of the way. You can also coil them up and secure them with some kind of um, clothespin or other clip. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to make a diamond pattern using a diagonal clove hitch knot. And when we get to the center of our diamond, we're going to make a square knot. Now the diagonal clove hitch knot can be a little bit tricky when you're first learning it. Um, and it can take some practice to master. So be patient with yourself. You may have to do some unknotting and re-knotting until you get the hang of it. Branch. What you wanna do is try to lay them flat next to each other. So you can determine which ones are in the center and which ones are on the outer edges. We're gonna start with the right outermost string. This will be coming toward the center at a diagonal while the other strings not around it. So then take the string next to it toward the center. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring it around behind. Then you're going to come around in front making this loop, then you're gonna go around behind and through that loop, and then you're gonna tug down before tightening it up to the top. Now it's over here on the right, so what we'll do again is go in front, making this loop, then go around behind and through, then tug down on that before pulling it tight to the top. Then you're gonna do that with the next string toward the center. Okay, so it's over here off to the left, so it has to come around behind first, then it goes over in front, behind and through the loop, Pull down, then tighten up. Now it's off to the right, so it comes in front, around behind and up through the loop. Pull down and then tighten. Okay, so we've made our right side diagonal coming toward the center. Now we're gonna switch over to the left side and do the same thing. So take your left outermost string, then take the one next to it toward the center, tuck it behind, then bring it around in front to make a little four, behind, then up through the loop, Tug down on it and then pull it toward the top. 
Now it's already off here to the left, so go in front, around, behind, and up through. Tug down and pull your knot tight. Now repeat that with the next one toward the center. You gotta bring it around behind first since it's on the right side. Then go in front, around, behind, and then up through the loop. Pull down, then pull up. Okay, then do that again, in front, around behind, up, through, and tighten. Okay, so that is both sides. What we need to do now is we need to connect them in the center. Doesn't matter which direction you go. I'm gonna go back and use this right center string to be the one that gets knotted around. And I'm gonna take the left center string and I'm gonna make two diagonal clove hitch knots, okay? So it's coming behind, over in front, around behind and up through the loop, pull down and then pull tight. So then do that one more time, take it around in front, behind and up through the loop, pull down, pull tight. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually continue this line out and that's gonna start our second diamond. So you're gonna take the next one over, it's coming behind first, then over in front, around and up through the loop, Tug down a little, then tighten and repeat in front, around and up through the loop, pull down, pull up. And then one more time with the outermost string, it's coming behind first, over in front, around behind and through, pull down and pull up. Then one more time. And you have completed that side of the next diamond. So, we'll so now to continue the other side, what we need to do is find that center string from this side, which should be the one, two, three, third from the right. And we're gonna continue making these diagonal clove hitch knots. So take the one next to it, bring it behind, and go around in front, behind and through the loop, pull down, and then tighten that one up. Then repeat in front, around behind and through, and pull down before up. And then you'll do that with the last string. And that's the top half of the next diamond. So what we're gonna do now that we've reached the center of this next diamond is we're gonna make a square knot using the four strings in the center. Now, if you've been following my other macrame videos, I taught you how to make a square knot using the method I first learned about 20 years ago. So I'm gonna show you a different method today that's a little bit more efficient if you wanna try this one instead. Okay, so what you're gonna do is take the right string from those four center strings and bring it in front of the center two strings. So you have this loop over here on the side. 
Then you're going to take the one on the left. You're going to bring that in front of that string from the right. Then you're going to take it behind the center strings and you're going to pull it up through the loop you created over here on the right. Pull it all the way through. And then you're going to take both of those side strings and pull them up. That's the first half. So what we're going to do is we're going to do it on the opposite side. So now the one on the left is going to come in front of the two center strings, making a loop on the left. The right string comes in front of that one that just went over the center strings. Then it goes behind the center two strings and up through the loop on the left. Pull it all the way through. Then take your two end strings and pull them up tight. And that is your square knot in the center. So what we need to do now is we need to finish the bottom of this diamond just like we did at the start of our planter. So you can start on either side, doesn't matter which one. And in fact, since I'm taking the right side all the way through on my diamonds, I'm gonna start on the left. So I'm gonna take the left outermost string, then the one next to it toward the center has to come behind first then over in front, behind, up and through the loop, pull down, then tighten up. And it's going to start curving back toward the center. So do that again. Now it's over here. So just go in front, around, behind, and up through the loop, pull down and tighten. Hopefully these knots are getting a little bit easier. They're tricky to get started at the top, especially when you're first learning. So now take the next one toward the center, has to come behind first, then over in front, around behind and up through, pull down, then pull tight, and then repeat for the second half. Okay, and then you're gonna switch over and do the right hand side and you can continue it into your next diamond. So take that right outermost, then the one next to it toward the center has to come behind first, then over in front, around behind and through the loop. Pull down, then tighten up. And repeat, in front, around behind, tug down before you tug up. And then grab the next string over, do the same thing. And now you've reached that center point again, so you need to connect your diamond. I'm going to continue with this right one. And then I can just keep on going with the next strings over to start the top of the next diamond. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over and do the other side to finish the top and then I'll show you the square knot in the center one more time. Take the one on the right and bring it across in front of the two center strings. Then take the string on the left and bring it in front of the one from the right. Then take it behind the center strings and up through the loop 
on the right. Once you have it all the way through, take both sides and pull tight up to that center point. Now you're going to do the opposite to complete the square knot. So the one on the left crosses in front of the center strings. The one on the right comes in front of that one from the left, goes behind the two in the center, and up through the loop on the left. Then take both sides and pull them up in opposite directions. So to complete this planter design, what I'm gonna do is just, I'm gonna continue the same pattern of diamonds and square knots until I get to my desired length. And then I'm gonna repeat the same thing with the other two branches. Once you have the three branches of your planter complete, what we're gonna do is create a little net for our pot to rest in. If you have the pot that you intend to use with this planter, you can hold it up to the strings to help you gauge how far apart you want your connector knots to be. But if you don't have a pot, you can just leave about two and a half to three inches from the bottom of your design, and then you can fit any pot that you would like. So to connect these two arms, I'm going to take three strings from the left on this arm and on the other one I'm going to take the three strings from the right. And what we're going to do with this design is we're going to make a little diamond pattern of square knots. So for the first square knot you actually just need four strings, so two from this arm, two from this arm. And since I don't have a pot for this one, I'm just going to come down about two and a half to three inches from the bottom of my design, and I'm going to make a square knot. So take that right most string, lay it across the center strings, take the left string on top, around behind the center strings, and up through the loop on the side. Then just tighten it up at the distance that you would like. Now we have to do the opposite side to complete the knot, so take the left string in front of the center strings, take the right string in front of that, around behind, and up through the loop, then pull both sides tight. That's your square knot. Now we're going to incorporate these other two strings. So I'm going to make another square knot, but this time I'm just going to use three strings. So I've got two from the square knot I just made, and then this other string to the right. So I'm only going to have one in the center this time. So I'm going to take the right string in front of the center string, left string in front of that, around behind that center string, and up through the loop. Then I'm going to pull both sides till they are parallel to this other square knot right underneath of it. Now I have to complete the square knot by doing the opposite. So take the left string over top the center, Take the right string over that left one, behind the center, up through the loop, and then pull it tight. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So you've got the three strings on the left. Take the rightmost string over the center. Left one comes in front of that, behind the center, up through the loop and pull through. And then pull it up next to the knot you just made. Now do the other side, left over center, right in front, behind and up through. And then pull that tight to complete your square knot. 
And now you're gonna make one more square knot just like you did at the top this time with the four center strands again. So right two, right over the center two, left in front, behind and up through, and pull tight. And then do the opposite side to complete the square knot. And then you have this little diamond of square knots. So now I'm going to take the other three strings from this branch and I'm going to connect it to the one next to it on the other side doing the same diamond pattern at about the same distance down. So now what I need to do is take my last remaining loose strands and form another diamond pattern just like I did with the others. Once you have connected all three of your branches with this diamond pattern of square knots, you should have enough space in here to hold a small to medium sized pot with a gathering knot that'll rest about another two and a half to three inches down. If you have a really large pot that you would like to hold, what you can do is you take the three strings from one side of this diamond pattern with the three strings from the diamond pattern next to it and you would create this pattern again with those shared strings and you would do that all the way around and then you can make your gathering knot underneath that. I'm going to make this just to hold a small to medium sized pot. So I'm going to be done here and I'm going to do one more gathering knot at the bottom which I will show you now. You can go back to your scrap bin to find another piece of string that's about 24 inches. Or if you have enough at the bottom of this project, which I do, just snip off a piece of string that's about 24 inches and you can use that for this final knot. All right, so to make this gathering knot come down about three to four inches from the bottom of this little diamond design here, take that small piece of string you cut, hold it with your thumb, parallel to the other strings, drop down about five inches, four or five inches and make a loop. And then you're just going to start wrapping that around all of your strings. And I like to wrap about the same as I did at the top, which I think was six. You want to wrap at least six. You can do more if you want a longer knot. When you're finished wrapping, take the loose end of the string through the loop at the bottom. Then take the loose end at the top and pull that loop through up into those wraps. And when you see it get to the center, tug on both ends to tighten it. Then just trim off the extra, being careful not to cut your other pieces of string. And if the other loose end's long enough, you can make it part of your fringe, otherwise you could trim that as well. And if you want, just tuck the fray in gently. And then the final step is just to decide how much fringe you want hanging down from your gathering knot. And then you're just going to take scissors and cut straight across. Once you have trimmed your fringe to the desired length, your planter is finished. All you need to do now is just set your pot in the net at the bottom. And then you can hang this either from a strong hook on your ceiling or you could have it come out from the wall on a shelf bracket.